Hi, I'm Bradford Keats, production engineer and consultant for over 30 years. Thank you for joining us. In this presentation, we will take a peek inside the media and entertainment industry in a stroll through the history of film and television. The goal is to highlight six phases of production, show how they relate within today's production pipeline, and to refer back to this video for further discussion. By having an understanding of these phases, it can be helpful when identifying what types of infrastructure, software, and services that are utilized within each category. The second part of this video is to show a condensed timeline of the history of film and television and a brief overview of how the standards came about. We hope you enjoy this presentation. Six Phases of Production Each phase of production was designed to organize and manage the creative and technical operations from beginning to end. Here are the six phases. Pre-production, production, post-production, production, QC or quality control, distribution, and archives. These production phases are deployed sequentially, but also produce content in scheduled batches and repeats the process in an overlapping manner again and again until the production cycle is complete. Pre-production. Pre-production is the planning, preparation, and organization of the overall project. It involves finalizing the script, hiring the actors, crew, and or animation houses, finding locations, determining what equipment you'll need, and figuring out the budget. Production. Production creates the content through a camera capture or animation of scenes or shots. The dailies constitute the accumulation of captured or animated footage of the day and is immediately passed on to post-production to be ingested, prepped, or organized for the editorial process. Post-production. Post-production is preparing for final release. It is the last phase of the production process and is focused around turning raw footage into the final product with editing and special effects. This includes picture editing, visual effects, sound design, music composing, color correction, final mastering, and QC. QC or quality control. QC is the process of verifying that a film, tape, or media file are fit for purpose, meaning it meets the required standards and specifications for how that media will ultimately be used. Distribution. Distribution is performed during and after production completes. During production, distribution pushes dailies and newly locked picture to the post-production team until the final scene has been completed. Final delivery is the distribution of QC'd and approved content to local broadcasters, theaters, and worldwide distribution channels. Archives. Archiving is the process of short-term and long-term preservation and provides access for immediate use and the preparation of future IP protection. All production phases are tracked separately, but are intrinsically connected throughout the entire production cycle. Now that we have identified the six phases of production, let's take a cloud's view of the history of film and television. The first known photograph was invented in 1826. 50 years later, silent films began in the late 1880s with varying frame rates and no standards. Then, in 1908, color film was invented. In 1926, film with sound was introduced and a compromise was made between the picture and audio engineers for best playback experience. This is when 24 frames per second became the universal standard. Up until this point, film was not measured in frames per second and rather by feet per minute. This is where the term footage was coined. 24 frames per second or 24 FPS was considered the most aesthetically and audibly pleasing and the lowest cost to produce films worldwide. Concurrently, black and white television was also being invented around 1926, but couldn't reproduce the same viewing experience using an electronic display. Due to the phosphors and tubes not being able to emit light long enough in between frames, this is when interlace technology was introduced. Interlace is the process of dividing a progressive frame into alternating scan lines or fields and refreshes the image twice as fast as a single progressive scan, reducing flicker and or motion artifacts. Two standards were developed from this and were driven by either 50 Hz or 60 Hz. Europe and other countries using 50 Hz adopted 25 frames per second, and America using 60 Hz adopted 30 frames per second. This was the beginning of what I call the fork in the road of production. 
Because film ran at 24 frames per second and now TV running at 25 and 30 frames per second, this would have a great impact on how we distribute content when films were converted to each of these standards. In 1940, the kinescope camera was invented, which allowed the film to be played back and captured through a lens and displayed live into a 50 or 60 hertz signal. Then, in 1950, videotape was created for both standards and recordings could be aired at later times, rather than a live on-air transmission. This was when syndication was founded. When color was introduced in 1954, 60 Hz was unable to stabilize the new chrominance and luminance signal, which required a reduction in a current of 59.94 Hz in order to resolve. This would slow down the frame rate from 30 frames per second to 29.97 frames per second and further complicate distribution when delivering to other regions. Europe's standard was named PAL, Phase Alternate Line, in America's standard NTSC, National Television Standards Committee. Once the telecine was invented in 1979, which is the process of transferring film to tape, we were able to convert 24 frames per second more accurately to 25 and 29.97 frames per second and these formats are still in use today. This was the aftermath of 1926 when television was unable to reproduce 24 frames per second because of the limitations of the electronic display. In the early 1990s was when nonlinear editing for picture and audio was introduced. This was the beginning of the computer age, file-based workflows, and the addition of IT support in the media and entertainment industry. Production would fully adopt these nonlinear methods and migrate the entire industry from film, tape and machines to software and computer-driven technology. Although this medium and hardware have changed over time, whether it is film, tape, or file-based workflows, we still carry all the same specifications imparted by SIMPTI, Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers. This is how we preserve the continuity and the compatibility over the exponential growth of the worldwide distribution library. In 1997, I had the honor of being part of the development of 24P, the purpose of this was to go back in time and re-implement the same concept of television in 1926, which was to capture, animate, edit, and distribute in true 24 frames per second from beginning to end. This would avoid the fork in the road of using interlaced technology during production, and rather just another deliverable in the distribution supply chain. It would also become the new industry standard, which is in use today in all areas of production, including TV, media, and digital cinema. Now that we have taken a stroll through the history of film and television, we can begin to understand that under the hood of the production assembly line, technology and IT plays an essential and all-encompassing role. As we continue to innovate and grow in today's market, IT is now required throughout all phases of production. Our goal is to continue to help the creative process in being creative and providing best-in-class support over technology and future development. The days of shooting on film or using analog or digital tape are almost obsolete. This leaves us with our file-based solution and delivery system, which preserves all legacy formats and supports the latest technology. It is designed to support older assets and bring them forward into today's latest standards and deliverables. In summary, film had established 24 frames per second, or 24p, as the standard in 1926. Television, on the other hand, could not reproduce the same experience and created interlaced technology until the advent of 24p nonlinear standard in 1997. This would finally allow the content creation to be produced in one universal format and the ability to distribute film, TV, and or media to any region without any frame rate conversion. This video was created using UHD Ultra High Definition 24P standard and is capable of delivering to any worldwide market in any format mentioned today. The hardware and software tools used in this project are listed below. Note. All professional production software and equipment must adhere to these industry standards provided by SIMPTI and other industry groups. Here is a partial list of other software and hardware being used for professional production. We hope you have enjoyed your high-level overview of the media and entertainment industry. Thank you for joining me today. Please feel free to reach out for any production services. This completes our presentation.